And this is going to be led by Manny Martinez. Manny Martinez has been a Toastmaster for 11 years. He's currently the Chief Enchanting Officer, that's a nice CEO, and current president of Dawn Talkers Toastmasters in Olympia. Worth getting up for. It must be like a 6 a.m. meeting. 6.30. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, Vandy's awards include Advanced Communication Silver and Advanced Leadership Bronze in the Legacy System, and he's one project shy of the level two and pathways for innovative planning. A seasoned communicator, Manny won District 77's International Speech Contest in 2012 and 2014, and earned third place during the 2012 Toastmasters International Conventions Speech semifinals in Orlando, Florida. Manny recently completed a 30 year career in the U United States Air Force. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and is now president of Relentless Leadership LLC, a leadership development company. Manny's presentation is titled Training Wheels. Attitude and Secrets. Please welcome Manny Martinez. and you were flying. <laughs> but the time beforehand, all the practice that you did before that point, the scab knees, the bruised elbows, the mushed up ribs, do you remember that? Now if you were a four, five, six year old and I told you, oh so you want to learn how to ride a bike? You're going to get Rubbed up knees and sore elbows and bruised ribs. What would you have thought? Ah! You would have never done it. But guess what? You did. Because you were focused on the prize, weren't you? The freedom to fly. To feel independent. To chart your own way. Let me ask you, and I want to hear some comments from the crowd back to when you were actually noticing that there was no hand in the banana seat. Hey, I'm flying! What did that feel like? What was that feeling like? Come on, tell me. Awesome. Awesome! Scary. Scary! Freedom. Freedom. Freedom! Freedom. What was it? Exhilarating. Exhilarating! Relief. Relief! <laughs> I can do it! I can do it! That's right! A few weeks ago at Division C, somebody said, I felt victorious. Wow! Leadership and public speaking is just like riding a bike, isn't it? Nobody ever tells you you're going to get scabbed up knees or bruised elbows or banged up ribs. But it's like that. So if I were to tell you, oh, so you want to be a leader? Well, get ready for bruises and knocks around. What would you do? Oh, I'm not so sure about that. See, I'm so energetic, the microphone just keeps popping off my ear. <laughs> <laughs> but you've never done it! Shake it over your arm and your glasses. There you go. Yeah, maybe so. Thank you. You've never done it. But, get your eyes on the prize, right? You wanted to feel like you were flying. You wanted to know what confidence was like. But success felt like when you said fellow Toastmasters. So it's a lot like riding a bike, isn't it? Now, 
Some of you, when you were riding your bikes, before you actually were free to fly, you had training wheels on, didn't you? Who had training wheels here? Oh, yeah. But didn't they feel cool? Weren't you somebody with training wheels? You were the stuff, right? And, you know, you could just stand in place on your bike, the training wheels, and just shift back and forth. You know what I'm talking about, right? That shift back and forth that you do. Yeah? You're not going very far, are you? But it feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Watch me. I'm safe. I'm comfortable. But you know, those training wheels, they also were a place of fear. And sometimes, we're comfortable. And that spot of fear, we stay there. And we keep our training wheels on. Might be in public speaking, might be in leadership, might be in a successful club plan, which is what we talk about today. So I'm going to do a little exercise with all of you right now. Because I don't believe you want to sit here 50 minutes and listen to me. You want to get the benefit of once I'm done. Right? Okay. So let's do this. You found on your tables, I'm sure you did, you wonder, what is that? Some little pieces of paper that look like this. Ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to do is, on that piece of paper, I want you to write down a fear you have. Maybe it's a fear when you get up to speak. Maybe it's a fear as a club officer that you have about your role. Maybe it's a fear that you might have in your club about anything. Now do not worry, do not put your names, and we will not read these out loud afterwards. But I want you to take a moment right now and do so. Okay? Go ahead and do that. Because today, my friends, we're gonna ditch our training wheels and get rid of our fear. Everybody write that down yet? Come on. Could be anything. This is not for great. Okay. Enough time already. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go walk around and you're going to throw away your fears into this trash can. All right? Crumple up your paper. Crumple up that paper into a little paper ball. I know you know how to do this. <laughs> I know you know how to do this. So do that now. And then I'm going to walk around. I know, I know. I, Bob, believe me, if I was good at catching, I, no, I'm, I'm an administrator by nature. Okay? So, now that we got this crumpled up, we're going to go around and go, throw away your fears. Tom, yes, you go do that. Oh, nicely folded. Thank you. Throw away your fears. Yes. Get rid of your training wheels, people. Uh oh, there you go. Uh oh. Can't see. There you go. There you go. Oh, you guys, look, look how, look how amazing you guys look. Look at the smiles on your faces. Oh, yeah. Get rid of your fears. Ditch your training wheels. Grow. Move on. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, this is great. Look at these people. Look at the smiles on their faces. Don't you feel relieved? Oh, oh. Oh, oh, that's oh, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not worried. I'll go down this way. There you go. There you go. Oh, right, oh, behind the back. That was a good one. Yes. Oh, some people still want to fold their feel and feel fears. Such respect for your fears. Thanks, gentlemen. He just fixed all the training wheels. Give yourself a round of applause. There you go. Yes. Good? Yeah, didn't you feel relieved? I know you did. I can see it in your faces. I can see you just training wheels have been ditched. And now that we don't have any more training wheels and our fears, fears are gone, we can really talk about some really cool stuff. Like successful club plans. <laughs> now, <laughs> yes, thank you! Oh yeah! I know I'm not very good at telling jokes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you're probably thinking, you know, if, oh man, he's been around for 11 years. I've been in four different clubs um, Hawaii, Florida, and here. Yeah, I know. I got faith to live in those places. But, <laughs> <laughs> you're probably thinking, oh, 11 years, he must have some secret sauce about talking. You just don't invite anybody to come up here and talk, right? Well, 
I hate to interrupt by telling you, I don't have a secret sauce. Now, I'll share some best practices that at least my club, Don Talker's Toastmasters, that meets at 6.30 in the morning on Tuesday, what we do. And now we're still working. But I'm going to share some of those things with you, some things that work for us. But before I share those things, the next question you probably have, and for those of you who like to write things down, if you brought your successful club plan with you, Good for you if you didn't, good for you too. Okay, <laughs> not a problem. If you want me to grade them afterwards, I'll be outside those doors at the end of today's session. Now, no, I'm just kidding. But, you're probably wondering what did we do? What did we do that made us successful? But I want to change that question for a moment. We asked what was going to be our climate level. What was going to be the atmosphere in our club? What kind of environment did we want to create to give people the opportunity to grow the best version of themselves? And once we did that, once we determined what that was going to look like, then we can talk about the specifics. What are we going to do? What kind of actions are we going to take? And what you find is, is there's, there's a lot we can do, but it's not a lot but you have to have the right mind frame. Because you can do a thousand things and have the wrong mindset, and guess what? Your club's gonna stink, period. So, okay, Manny Martinez, how do you answer your question, right? <laughs> well, first thing was, when I walk into my club, what's my attitude look like? And this is what it sounds like. A, it's not about me. I might happen to be the president of Don Talker's Toastmasters. I've just been given an honor to help people become the best version of themselves. All right? But it's not about me. It's not my club. It's their club. And so my interest is how do I provide a place, a fertile ground, for them to succeed? That's why I changed my title. Did you hear in the introduction? I'm the chief enchanting officer and current president of Don Talker's Toastmasters. Now, you can be a president, nothing wrong with that, it's great. But to be the chief enchanting officer, don't you want to be enchanting? <laughs> <laughs> and so if you walk in and say, welcome everybody, I'm the chief enchanting officer. <laughs> you feel great. <laughs> I'm the president. I can think of a lot of presidents I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll leave you to fill the blank. <laughs> Now, I'm, really, I'm the chief cheerleader. That's my role. Because I want to create an environment where people come in and they feel safe. You know what I used to say when I used to be at Probert Field Toastmasters, home of the speech commandos? <laughs> yeah, because we were the air commandos, so we would say, we were the speech commandos. All right? I would say, you know what? I want to create an environment where mistakes are welcome and we even applaud them. How about that? Creating that environment for them. Here's another way I look at my attitude. I will be vulnerable first. Successful second. Vulnerable first. Successful second. So what does that mean? In my, in my book, it means that I have to connect with you at a human level. And if I can't do that, then we're always going to be distant. You know, these are small clubs. We should know each other at a human level. I'll give you an example. I've been doing this for 11 years, right? As a Toastmaster, I'm still learning, still growing, but I have a little more aptitude than, say, somebody who just started three months ago. And so if I get up there and give the greatest speech of my life during my normal 6.30 meeting, and I'm just trying to figure out how to spell Toastmasters, that can be intimidating. So again, I'm not in it for myself, and I want to be vulnerable. I want to show other people that I'm a human being just like you, with dreams just like you, with desires just like you, with things that I want to accomplish. And from there, then you can say, you know what? If Mandy can do that, I can do that too. Vulnerable first, 
successful second. And here is my other thing, and this just runs contrary to what a lot of us have been brought up with, and I'm still struggling with it. I'm recovering. I can't wait to fail! <laughs> because if I do nothing, I reap nothing. So I have to try things. I, and that's our proving ground to do so. What's the worst thing if I, if that's going to happen in a Toastmasters club, people? If you try something and it stinks, I get a two three minute evaluation about it. <laughs> and then I get told, I look forward to your next presentation. <laughs> How invigorating to fail! Fail, people! If you're doing the same thing and whining and moaning about your club, guess what? Look at yourself and say, maybe there's something else I can do. What if it bombs? You at least said, that's one thing I won't do again. <laughs> and then you can try something else. Until you find something that maybe in your club, in your atmosphere that you're trying to build works. And when you do that, man, you're walking on air. You know, you're like, yeah, training wheels off one more time. Bam. Now, we as a club needed to determine that. Tom Talkers had to determine what was going to be our atmosphere, right? The temperature we wanted to create, the goodness we wanted to have. And I tell you, my club was pretty good when it came to hospitality. When I joined it about three years ago, very welcoming team, very fun team. It's IHOP at 6.30 in the morning, pancakes and bacon, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and you have to be there. If we're not a corporate club, nobody has paid them to show up. So if you're meeting at Tuesday at 6.30 in the morning, you're probably a little bit motivated. <laughs> More so than somebody else. <laughs> so we had a pretty friendly team. But yet, I mean, we still do. We had some challenges. We have many people who like the idea of meeting together and being social. There's your training wheels. We had a team that liked their table topics and reveled them. And although table topics are great, they're only a tool. And they became a training wheel. So we needed to think about what did we want to do a little bit different to take us to the next level. And mind you, if you're only crawling as a baby, the next step is learning how to walk, not how to run a sprint. So how do we get to that next level? We sat down, we met in our Sergeant of Arms house. I actually wrote my bike there. I, this is weird that I picked this song and I thought, I wrote my bike too. That <laughs> and we talked about, let's dust out the successful club plan. And I know you guys do this every year. Let's dust out what they did last year. Oh, this looks pretty good, just a couple of tweaks. And that's fine, that's where we got started. But the successful club plan has a lot of different areas to evaluate. Things like your values, or perhaps training, education, mentorship, meeting your goals. And so, I know what that feels like. Overwhelming. I got a whole year and all these things to do. So we said, you know what? Let's break this down. What three overarching areas do we want to just focus on? And everything we do focuses on these three things, and if they're not in these three things, it's something else. So we just summarized and said, we want to focus on, these are going to be earth shattering, so brace yourselves. <laughs> Speaking, <laughs> education, and membership building. All right? So I'm going to break those down for you. This is what we did. And again, Nothing that's going to surprise you or shock you. First thing, yeah, speaking. This was July, August time frame, 18. In March, what happened? The big release of Pathways, right? So we were fresh in the Pathways. Now, we took the idea of, you know what? Our club's been kind of rusty when it comes to speaking. Let's use this as a springboard to get back on track. A do-over, a fresh start for us. Now, who, who thought that? Right? I can tell you who didn't. <laughs> there are people who felt it was Armageddon last March. That the, 
the entire world fell down on them. There was a LinkedIn post a few months ago where somebody was asking, like, hey, how do you ask people, can you join my club? And this person just piped in. Me and Toastmasters International parted this past spring after this happened. My years of my life have been ruined. You know? And I thought, calm down. <laughs> Let me ask you something. And this has and this is not an age question, so I'm not trying to call anybody old. Would you wear the same outfit for 80 plus years? <laughs> Would you? What's wrong with that? <laughs> Unless you're Batman and he changes his suit every movie. <laughs> you don't! <laughs> so Pathways was just a new suit, a new outfit. That's all it was. I guess this person was really comfortable in their pajamas. <laughs> okay, you parted. Good for you. We're still here and we used it as a springboard to get us back on track. And that was really helpful. And so that kind of broke away a little bit of the anxiety we had about Pathways because it was new. We just said, hey, why don't we just use this as a way to get started again. Then, education. We had an educational moment in our club every single meeting. It was towards the end of our meeting. And you know what that means. Who's listening? When it's 6.30 in the morning and now it's 7.28 and oh, let's bring up the educational moment. And people are looking at their phones now. They're, oh, I got a phone call to take at 7.30. I got to get on the road. They're not listening. And now I've got all these new members who should be learning about Toastmasters. So I, we did something drastic. We moved the time of the educational moment to the beginning, before the speeches even really happened. And said, so, you know, we're going to do this. I've given two talks on how to sign up for Pathways. Both times, the internet stunk at IHOP, but we gave them anyway. And the persons who wanted the talk, they weren't there for the meetings. Can you believe that? <laughs> the nerve, right? But we did it anyway, right? And so we used that moment because we recognized what's the environment we want to create? What's the culture we want to create? One that wants to learn. And we can't put learning at the end and say we care about it. We care about your learning. Last of minutes of me. Does it make sense? And then membership. This was a shift for us because like I said before, you got to be a little motivated to show up at 6.30 a.m. on a Tuesday morning, right? Yeah? So we had 12 members two years ago, 14 members starting this year, and I can smile and say we have 20 members right now. Okay? It will change. Hopefully, in the positive trajectory, but people are always going to come and go, and that's just the nature of life in Toastmasters, right? There's a couple of members that I haven't been seeing much for a while, and I've tried making a couple of phone calls and a couple of emails, and I get crickets, and that's okay. Um, I'll probably lose them, but I didn't lose them, they lost, they lost me, and it's not from trying, but that's okay. That happens, all right? But we had to, ch we had to change and the way we thought about the quality of the meeting we were giving. Because if all we ever did was table topics and eat breakfast, we could do that anywhere else. But if we wanted to create an environment where members were being developed and they were actually pursuing the things they wanted to do, we needed to make sure that we provided the whole gamut of what Toastmasters offers, right? Because if you're there because you want to be a great speaker, and all we do is table topics, have, you know, as, as our bread and butter, you're going to leave. You're going to leave. And go find some other club. Okay? Now, here's another thing about membership building. I have built more members for clubs in this area than my own. And I'll tell you why. So, I live in Olympia. Until October of 2018, I was in the Air Force. So, I worked on Joint Base Lewis McCord. Guess where all my membership building happens? <laughs> At work on base. Oh, Toastmasters is a great community 
Where do you live? Oh, I live in Lakewood. Oh, they've got some clubs over there. I'll tell you how to find them. I generated more membership for other clubs than for my own club. And you know what? I am absolutely 200% fine with that. Because if that gets that person to achieve what they want to do, more power to them. And I believe in the system. And guess what? Sometimes we have this idea that we're parochial in the way we do Toastmasters. I belong to Club XYZ, and I do everything for Club XYZ. And if it's ABC Club, <laughs> I'm not doing anything for that. Well, that's small-minded. You need to think about the greater aspect of what we provide as an organization. So I'm okay with that. And you know what else? Eventually, some of those clubs are going to run into somebody. Oh, you live in Olympia? I know some crazy guy that gave a talk at 6.30 in the morning on Tuesday. Go see them, right? So I'm okay with that. The environment and the culture that we want to create. Now, in November, if we weren't crazy enough that we actually dusted off the sexual club plan and rewrote those pieces and we had our three overarching areas, we got really crazy. We did moments of truth. Ooh. Ooh. That sounds so scary, moments of truth. Who's done this recently? <laughs> oh, she raised her hand and quickly put it back down. She didn't want to help me point it out. Moments of truth. No, no, no. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You want to feel naked for 60 minutes in front of a crowd? Do moments of truth. Okay? I facilitated that. I could have been, I could have had jackets and coats on and a scarf. I thought I was wearing my cloth, okay? Now, I have always hesitated about moments of truth. I told you I've been in four clubs, never done it before. We were pretty good clubs. But I was afraid because moments of truth. Sounds like a lifetime movie network show. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to, you know, and to be fair, it sounds scary. Moments of truth. Right? Very scary. So I did the dumb thing. I'm like, you know what? You talk about training with Martinez. That's your training wheel. You know, you're sitting on fear right now. Right? <laughs> so I did something totally crazy. I sent an email to my office and I said, hey, you know what, I really would think that Moments of Truth would be a really good thing for us because we have a lot of new members and how do we know what they want or what they want to accomplish if we don't ask? We we're only just guessing. And I'm not a good mind reader, ask my wife. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still expecting to read her. Are you a good guesser? And you know the feedback I got from my officers? It sounded just like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I sent another email. I really think that Moments of Truth is a great thing. So during our next business meeting, which we incorporated into our fourth Tuesday of the month, by the way, we do a 30-minute mini meeting, normal meeting, and then we have our business meeting. So all our members are there to be part of. Creating the culture again, right? Transparency. So I sent them another email and I said, I think, you know, based on all your great feedback, we're going to be doing <laughs> Moments of Truth for our next meeting. And then I typed up the email that I was going to send to the membership. I typed it up. I read it once. I read it twice. I read it three times. I spent an hour staring at that note going, oh, gosh, Moments of Truth. <laughs> and then I hit send. And it had the attachment with the, with, the, with the worksheet, with the two pages, that evaluates those six different areas. So for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> on Moments of Truth, there is a sheet that you get everybody in your club together, and there is a, a two-page sheet, and it evaluates different areas, like membership, hospitality, speaking, mentorship. I think I, remember, I, think I said that twice, but that's okay. <laughs> because it, it probably will accentuate itself here in a minute. And your club members, during the meeting, evaluate how your club is doing. What they're doing well, what they're not doing so well, what they can improve on. Now, every area has six components. 
to evaluate. So a mentorship for six different blocks. And they have a scale, one through five. One is terrible, five is rock star. We scored, out of possible 30 points, a six <laughs> in mentorship. Now, we scored in 80% hospitality and in having the agendas and the right administration. So we gathered all that information. And that was 60 minutes of nakedness as the chief enchanting officer. <laughs> okay? And then I said the next crazy thing. I'm going to collect all the data and all the information you gave me, and I'm going to summarize that in an email that I'm going to send to you so you can review all the information, make sure I didn't miss anything. Then I had to deliver the goods, right? So I did that. Now, Toastmasters International does not ask you to give it a percentage grade, but I did. We scored 33% in Moments of Truth, even with that 80% in there. Mentorship was the worst, 20%. And I wanted them to see the numbers. I wanted them to see. Because from there, we could use that as an opportunity. And this is what I did. Okay, mentorship is, is our most area for improvement. And meeting setup and hospitality, this is what we do best. And then I wrote something at the bottom of the email that I wrote in my notes because I think it really, once again, summarizes what is the atmosphere, the environment we want to create. This is what I wrote. I envision a club where people love coming together, collaborating to grow in oral and communication and leadership skills in a safe space where mistakes are welcome moments to gain confidence, where members feel empowered to speak, bring their individuality, and celebrate each other and each other's accomplishments, where an applause truly means something special and something greater than a reaction to someone walking to the lectern. I believe Dawn Talkers to be that place. Talk about naked. But it's been great. So guess what we did last month? We got mentors assigned. We got people who say, I want a mentor, and I'll mentor you. And we had conversations about that. And I was even missing at the meeting. They did it. And when people can do things in a club or in an environment because you're not there, that says something. That shows their commitment. That shows that they want to continue moving forward. So that makes me proud. Even if it's 20%, we're moving in the right direction. And you gotta have fun, right? We have fun in our meetings, don't we? We know we do. You know Toastmasters is fun. It is fun. We were already a pretty fun team, but we did some other little things to make it even more fun. Because can't have enough for 60 minutes. So this is not news, but we started doing theme meetings, and this is not new Toastmasters, but it's great. It's great to do a theme meeting once in a while or every week, depending on how you want to do it, because it just kind of the monotony sometimes can get to you, right? And so that keeps things fresh and vibrant, whether you're one year, 11 years, 22 years. We did a Halloween theme and everybody dressed up. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or my wife's witch, witch hat and cake. It was great. We did a meeting on, the theme was books. Oh my goodness. Books. And everybody brought a book, maybe their favorite book, and they shared quotes and stories and what those books meant to them. You want to talk about connective tissue in 60 minutes? Get to know people at a personal level? Do the thing about books if you haven't done it. I, I knew it was going to be good, but I was floored. I'm a book lover, so I was just a whole 60 minutes. I'm like, man, I'm loving this. And then we did one of chocolate, which quite frankly, every Tuesday at 6.30 a.m., it should be chocolate themed. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing earth shattering, folks. I know I'm not telling you anything you probably haven't heard before. But you probably haven't, bless you, 
probably haven't heard it from a five foot four energetic maniac that meets a six thirty. <laughs> so we need an IHOP, right? IHOP, breakfast, bacon, and more bacon. Yeah. So it's the last beginning of the year. You know, we collect dues, and, you, and people always wonder, what are you doing with that money? We bought everybody in the club breakfast for our last meeting of 2018. It was great. Order whatever you want. Eat. <laughs> Come hungry. And people were smiling, having an even better time than normal. Even the folks that normally get pancakes. <laughs> they got quadruple pancakes, right? And then Jen, our waitress, every Tuesday, she's our waitress, sets up our tables, takes our orders, knows when to actually not interrupt. <laughs> and you know what we did? We passed the card around. Merry Christmas, put a bunch of money in there. She's a single mom with an eight-year-old. Probably could have used a little extra help during that time. She was great. We did a certificate for IHOP. <laughs> and I even spent more than the dollar store frame for it. <laughs> You know, see, you've done it. That's why you laugh. <laughs> and we presented it to the manager and to Jen. We knew it would just be, right? And we're having fun doing this. Okay? Simple things that make a big difference down the road. And then, remember I talked about membership building? We had to change a little bit about our folks in membership building because... I'm not telling you this is incorrect. I'm not telling you to stop doing this practice. So please do not misunderstand me. You can go around town posting flyers at coffee shops. You can go to businesses and say, I've got this great Toastmasters club and I'm the president of the club and why don't you join us? When do you guys meet? 6 30 in the morning? Oh. <laughs> well, kind of what I'm going to do with this sheet of paper. Right? For our club, we realize that. You know, we might be a small group, but you have to be dedicated. And so that means that if somebody has enough willingness to come hang out at 6.30 in the morning and go, I heard you guys meet at 6.30, I want to come check it out, that they're probably going to come back. So we said, we need to, keep, we need to focus a little more internally about the quality of our meetings. What you don't know, folks, you don't know. So for example, our club, until two years ago didn't know that Toastmasters has this thing called ballots, pre-perforated, where you can leave comments to the speaker and the Toastmaster and all that stuff. They didn't know that. Now, they used to use little notebooks and they would just break out paper and, and would give comments, and that's, that's great. But they didn't know that Toastmasters had this. They didn't know that Toastmasters had Toastmasters pens, okay? So now we have our Toastmasters ballots with Toastmasters pens and welcome packets. We even got welcome packets. You know, and I'm really lazy. And you know what? If Toastmasters can build me a welcome packet, then I'm the world. Right? <laughs> Why am I going to build them myself? I'll just throw an application in the packet and say, here's our welcome packet. And then if you're really interested afterwards, I can sit down with you and tell you how we join. With that application sitting right there in front of them the entire 60 minutes. <laughs> right? So we. What you don't know, you just don't know. So you, you have to learn these things. And so we did little things like that, which, well, I've been doing that for years. Yes, but they're little things. Those are little things. You can do those too. And so we, instead of going run around and asking people to come show up at a 6.30 in the morning meeting, which yields very low results, we started bringing people in. So there's a guy that popped in at the end of the meeting after we had adjourned, and he looked very fancy. Great hair, unlike me. <laughs> and I said, hey, I just want to introduce myself. I'm the chief injecting officer at Dr. Office Toastmasters. And, you know, and he gave me his name, and, and then he said, yeah, I'm the, I'm the president of the Lacey Chamber of Commerce. I'm like, cha-ching! Hey, would you mind coming to my club sometime? And just talk about, I'm sure you do a lot of public speaking. I'm sure you talk to groups. Well, you know, actually, I used to be a to uh, to uh, Toastmaster up until eight years ago. Terrific! Come hang out with us. Give us a talk. And what we did, we did an interview. We sat in the front, we did an interview. Hey, so let me ask you, you know, why did you start Toastmasters? And then we had this conversation. It was great. 
So I've got all these new members that now can connect the dots. Hey, maybe I'm the next Lacey Chingo of Congress president. And this person was able to do that because they worked on communication skills and leadership skills. And they did it in a Toastmasters club. Maybe not as crazy as Don Talkers, but they did. Right? Connecting those dots. We brought in the president of Tacoma Bureaucrats. He's been in Toastmasters for a year and a half. He and I are friends, and he said, you know what? Toastmasters has made such an impression on me. It's really helped my life. Dude, come tell your story. Come to our club. Check us out. Tell us how we're doing. Don't be parochial about your clubs, folks. You will lose. You will lose. And think about the upper hand or the help you can give somebody else. They might help you too. Now, these are just practices that we've done. Nothing earth shattering, nothing super special and crazy. All right? And we're still growing. I want to keep our club growing. I want to improve the quality of it. We're not done yet, you know. I want to improve that 20%, okay? But I bet you that around this room, you guys have some really great ideas. And this is where we get to do a little exercise, of course. So what I would like you to do is, hopefully you have representatives from more than one club at each table, I hope so. Did you just? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, liars. No, no, you're telling me the truth? Okay. So what I want you to do is that I want you to spend the next five minutes talking to each other about what kind of best practices you've done in your club to improve the atmosphere, improve the culture, improve the ways that you're doing what you're doing. And I want you to just spend the next five minutes sharing that. So, three, two, one, go! Table can benefit from what you guys discussed. Um, so I, I'd like to start with the table here in the back. If you guys could listen, um, table here in the back. What, what's what's one thing you guys shared? <laughs> well, we were many things. One of the most powerful draws I, I have found in bringing guest members, <clears throat> new people to the club, is that personal contact and finding a way to encourage our members to invite somebody from work, their next door neighbor, their friend, their veterinarian, whatever, say, oh, uh, I, I'm really having fun yeah. at this event. And I'd love it if you could come this week or next week or just to, to come, that personal connection. And also, that, that's, that's one of the things. And then the other thing is, open houses have been we've, something that we've relied upon to, to build membership. I'm beginning to think that those two words, open house, are more deterrent than a help. Because, you know, I don't know if, you know, but if, you, if you plan an event with a special speaker or an activity or a special lesson, then people really know, oh, I want to come hear that. Right? Rather than just, uh, open house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, plan those around a person or an event or a game, some sort of special that's great. activity. That's great. Yeah, thank you. And, yeah, that's great insight. And I like that because whenever I go to an open house, I'm trying to find the exits. Oh. <laughs> Did they want to be leave? <laughs> How about you guys over here in the corner, uh, at my table? We have two club workers here in both clubs. Take some time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Adrian Campo. We have two clubs represented here, and both of our clubs represented here give a brief explanation of the meeting roles so that. It serves multiple purposes. One, to help guests understand what these people are doing. It also helps newer members understand what we're doing and reminds the rest of us and collectively then we understand what's going on better. Yeah, yeah great. Thank you. That's, that's great. Thank you. And how about here at my timer? What you guys to talk about? Oh, great. Thank you. We're not over time. Well, hi, everyone. My name is Ryan Orsett. I'm the president of Bremerton 63. I'm El also Presidente. El Presidente. I changed my name too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm also the club coach for Key Peninsula, which are both club, clubs right here as well. And one thing that we've discussed is be able to get the ship steering in the right direction. 
And that starts with the club success, club success plan. But the problem is, is with the officer meetings, they're so regimented, you want to be there for three hours fighting over certain kind of things and going back and forth. We actually opened up in Bremerton 63 a Google open drive, kind of an open document where people are able to share things. So we had one person able, and he did the whole club success plan and his opinion and ideas, and then he opened it for everybody else. And it wasn't like a homework assignment where we're like, you gotta get this done by this date. We had people who would get done the that week, whenever they had time, the month later, and then we're all ready when it comes to the club officer meeting. We've all seen the comments, we all know exactly where everybody stands, and we're able to approach the plan and execute, and we all know exactly where we're going. And if there is a problem, then you have one person that says, <laughs> we're going this way, since yeah. I'm the president. That's very nice. Yeah, thank you. But that's where we're going. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Great, great ideas, and I know there's a bunch more out there. Um, what I want you to remember, you know, success, success plan is important. But it's not important that you get everything on there just right. The important thing is that you understand the things that, that you want to move towards. And they might be simple little things, but you're making positive steps, positive progress. Again, you don't learn how to walk unless you learn how to crawl. You don't learn how to run unless you learn how to walk, right? So you can't just walk in and think, I'm going to go and do all these things. When you're down here, you have to be deliberate about what you're doing and celebrate those little victories as you go. Great insights, everybody, and, and thank you for your, everybody's involvement during this seven, five minute conversation. All right, so I know you heard at the beginning that I spent 30 years in the Air Force. I just retired in October of 2018, so about four months ago. I have a blue ID card. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just retired on it, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty awesome, you know, 30 years, it's a lot of haircuts. <laughs> a lot of haircuts. <laughs> and I was, when I retired in the Air Force, um, and we have enlisted ranks, and we have nine enlisted ranks, and I was at the ninth enlisted rank, the highest rank, and it's called Chief Master Sergeant, which was really convenient, because when I left, then I became the Chief Enchanting Officer. <laughs> so in, in some ways, I just stayed a Chief. And that was really cool. And when I was, when I was in the Air Force, as, as a chief, I was what's called the senior enlisted leader. I was the grandpa in the organization. And we had, in my organization, it was actually pretty small. We had 80 enlisted officers and civilians. About 76 of those were enlisted. So predominance of them were enlisted. And they were all, by virtue of my rank, lower than I was. So they were younger, up and coming. Most of them maybe had one stripe or two stripes. I had eight. Okay? I just could, could not have enough room to keep going. <laughs> and so I retired. And then, um, but I used to meet, this, this will make sense in a minute, I used to meet with all our new people, airmen, that would come to our organization. And I used to say, I'm going to share with you two chief secrets that I share with all of you. Because sometimes you forget that I'm a human being like you. And I used to do this, and, and when I thought about putting together this presentation, I thought these, these secrets really fit in with what we do as Toastmasters as well. So the first chief secret, I, I would sit down with these people who were 18, 19, 20 years old, one stripe, two stripes. And I would say, the first secret is chiefs don't know everything. Just because I've been in the military for 28, 29, 30 years doesn't mean that I've mastered everything and I don't know everything. And I am perfectly okay. If you ask me a question, I am perfectly okay with saying, you know, I don't know. But together, let's find out. So whether you're the treasurer, whether you're the secretary, whether you're the PPE or you're the PPPR, I guarantee you may not know everything probably don't. And that's okay. Because you've got a team that can help you and that you're willing to learn. Right? And you're willing to do something positive. You're not going to know everything. It is impossible. Okay? But don't let that become your training wheel. I don't know everything. Right? And then the second chief secret is 
Machines make mistakes. So you have an 18, 19 year old sitting in front of you, and they're looking at eight stripes going, oh, they're just gawking at the massiveness of it, right? And I'm like, I'm five foot four, you know? I'm up here, I'm really nice. I'm really friendly, yeah? But that can be very intimidating. And I would tell them, the only difference between your two stripes on, on your sleeve and my eight on mine is that I've made a lot more mistakes along the way than you have. And so I want you to feel empowered to make mistakes too, because guess what? You're going to make mistakes too. But that's okay. I want you to know that I expect that's going to happen, and we learn from those mistakes, and then we move on and we learn and we grow and we become. And I'm going to guarantee you, if you didn't do it during the last meeting, sooner or later you're going to make mistakes. It's just a fact of life for human beings, right? Just don't let that fear of making mistakes stop you from doing the things that you know you and your club can benefit from, that your membership can benefit from, that your community can benefit from. Don't let that become your training program. So, those were my two chief secrets, and I just wanted to share those with you. So let's summarize. When we talked about training wheels, and the freedom of not having any on, and we threw them away, our fears, into my beautiful trash can. My wife is wondering, where's the, half, where's the trash can now? <laughs> now, I, I throw these away, but last time I did this, I kept one. And I opened it up, and it said, because it was about a fear, and this person wrote, and again, I don't know who it was, this person wrote, fear of not being valued. Of not being what? Fear of not being valued. And I thought, were they reading my mind? Because that's a fear of mine, of not being valued. So that's why I want to create that environment, right? That attitude, that was that second thing we talked about. The attitude you bring in when you come to the club is so important. What's the environment you want to create? And then remember those secrets. You're not going to know everything, and you're, and you're going to make mistakes. But that's okay. You're going to learn, and you're going to grow from that, and you're going to become better. And those around you, you will help become better too. If you remember anything from my last this last hour presentation, when you start doing this, when you start getting comfortable sitting on fear, pitch the wheels off. Thank you.